This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This is a type of insurance that ensures that your income continues in the event that you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important. So important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. Hi, my name is Jessica Morin. I am an x-ray tech at University Hospital now for 20 years. I know, right? <laughs> um, I do diagnostic radiology now. I used to do MRI for a little bit, but I work for the University Trauma Clinic, so now I take care of all the outpatient clinics that have been, uh, outpatient patients that have been seen as a trauma here at University Hospital. We have an average per month between 800, well for me exams, 800 to 1200 exams that I do a month by myself. <laughs> and it's very challenging and I enjoy it. All right, show us around and uh, some of your equipment that you use on a daily basis. All our, all our equipment now is digital. Everything, pretty much everywhere you go, unless you go to a very small uh, rural hospital, will have actual plates that have film. Nowadays, everything is digital. So our plates, this is an older model. It's actually tethered mm -hmm. to the actual machine, to the table. But the newer model on the other side is just a very thin plate. This one, like I said, it's older, so it's a little thicker, but it's all digitized. We don't have to change out the plates. Every time it's shot, it goes automatically to the computer, and once it's done, sent off automatically into the patient's chart that is now, of course, everything's computerized now. So as soon as you shoot the x-ray, the uh, providers can take a look at the x-ray right away? Absolutely. They don't have to wait for us to develop them. Like back in the day, there's no developing time. Everything is instantaneous. Um, it helps for speeding, getting patients through a little faster. Uh, I don't see any downside. I'm sure so other people see a downside. I don't see a downside. Well, the downside is as a new tech, you never learn how to make actual exposures with actual techniques because everything is pretty much digitized, so it's computerized. So you have a, maybe this is what I should use. Back then we had to be precise or you'd either burn the film, it'd be dark, or it'd be light. And what is this right here? What is this thing called? This is called the actual X-ray tube. This is the machine. This is the one where all the radiation that they say come out and it's not big loads. Everybody always thinks incredible hope, but it's not. Small amounts, especially now that it's digital. Uh, it's very, very small. They pretty much say if you've had one or two sunburns in your life, you've had more radiation that you'll ever get in your entire life pretty much okay. from this. Yeah. And what is a typical day for you? Kind of usually starts at what time and ends uh, at what time? By 7.15, I'm X-raying. Uh, if it's a busy day for for like Dr. Agarwal if it's, and uh, PA Kodoski, if it's a busy day for them that they have full clinics, I will start by 7.15, be done by morning clinic by 12.30, and then afternoon clinic starts at 1.30 until about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Okay, and what education or schooling is required to become an x-ray technician? Uh, civilian world would be here at St. Phillips and Baptist offer two. They both of those two are the ones that offer programs. I believe for St. Phillips, uh, yeah, it's a two-year program accord with prerequisites. It's called Associates in Applied Sciences, and I'm I have an associates, but I am military trained, yeah. so I came into it very a little differently than most people do okay and you spoke about MRI as well do you have to have additional training for that once you become an x-ray tech then you can branch out into MRI CT ultrasound uh, in interventional radiology 
the one that you don't that you need an actual different schooling for is nuclear medicine that is a um, I believe it's a master's that they do at Incarnate Word okay any other equipment that you can have that you can maybe show us uh, equip well when we go do our portables we always have to wear lead apron because yes mm -hmm. We do this all the time. You do not want to get exposed to the radiation. The patient is different. You still cover the patient, especially if they're pregnant. If you're only doing something that doesn't require this area to be exposed, you should cover the patient. You should always take care of yourself. More than six feet away, you should be fine, but you should always take care of yourself because this is your livelihood, your body, and you're going to be constantly doing this. Awesome. That's all I got. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. I appreciate it.